Good day and God bless you. Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. Just such a privilege to have you with us. And we thank the Lord that you have joined us and participating with us in this venture. I pray that the Lord would be with us even as we would study the word of the Lord together and read through his word together. Today we're busy in the second book of the Chronicles and we're going to be dealing with chapters 6 and 7 and we're also going to be dealing with Psalm chapter 136. So let's get straight into it. We see that uh, chapter 6 of the second book of the Chronicles continues on uh, from chapter 5 and we did the overview in 1 Kings chapter 8 as well where Solomon blesses the people and praises the Lord God. He prays at the consecration of the temple, as we read in 1 Kings 8, and we see the beauty and the depth of understanding in his prayer. I've highlighted one verse, namely verse 18, which says, But will God in every deed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house which I have built. And we spoke about that a little bit yesterday when we went through it to say, Solomon knew that the Lord is in heaven. And this is something that was so different from the pagan nations. And it's something that the Israelites highlighted against the pagan nations to know that their God was a living God. And where the pagan nations served idols and had temples to these idols and believed that their gods dwelt in that, uh, in that temples, yet Solomon is saying that the Lord of hosts, he dwells in the heavens. This temple is just a habitation for him where the people can come and lay their sacrifices to the Lord, where the people can come and pray to the Lord and open their hearts to the Lord, and the Lord will hear them from heaven. And this is just such a beautiful thing and so important that he laid it out in this way. Then we see in chapter 7 that the Lord gives testimony to the prayer of Solomon. The people worship and praise the Lord God and Solomon makes sacrifices unto the Lord. And with this, the Lord appears to Solomon and honors his request that the Lord will answer and heal the people and the land if they call upon the name of the Lord in sincerity and in turning away from evil. But the Lord also warns him as to what will happen if the people turn away from the Lord. And this is so important to, to highlight and to go through because the Lord gives that warning and we'll see how that warning comes to fruition later on when we go through the captivity of Israel and the Babylonian captivity and all of these. Then we get to Psalm chapter 136 and this is a psalm of exhortation to praise the Lord God for his particular mercies toward the people. Now this is quite an exciting psalm in that the psalm uh, is actually a call and response song where the choir or the congregation would answer the call of the lead singer. So the lead singer would sing the line and the rest of the people would respond with the line for his mercy endureth forever. Now the psalmist starts out with God alone and proclaims the greatness and the might of God. And then he acknowledges God as the creator and then as the mighty God. And then as the deliverer of the children of Israel. And then as the conqueror. And then as the redeemer. And if you look at this in pattern of how the Lord ministers to his people. How the Lord has done all of these things. You see the beauty in that. And every time it mentions the Lord. Even when it talks about the Lord before the creation. It says his mercy endureth forever. So the Lord had mercy for his people even before the foundations of the world. And that's so beautiful to see. There's so much that can be tapped into there. It's its own Bible study. And like we say every time, each of these chapters can be broken down into its own study. And I don't want to get too much into it. I want to just lay out the overview as best as I can. But we're going to leave it there. And I pray that you would enjoy the song Enjoy the meditation on this word today. I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. God bless you as you enjoy the reading of the word today. Chapter 6 Then said Solomon, The Lord hath said that he would dwell in the thick darkness, but I have built an house of habitation for thee, and a place for thy dwelling forever. And the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth to my father David, saying, 
Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build an house in, that my name might be there. Neither chose I any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David my father to build an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to David my father, For as much as it was in thine heart to build an house for my name, thou didst dwell in that it was in thine heart. Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son which shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house for my name. The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he hath spoken. For I am risen up in the room of David my father, and am set on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And in it have I put the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord that he made with the children of Israel. And he stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands. For Solomon had made a brazen scaffold of five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high, and had set it in the midst of the court. And upon it he stood and kneeled down upon his knees before all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands toward heaven, and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in the heaven nor in the earth, which keepeth covenant and showest mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. Thou which hast kept with thy servant David my father that which thou hast promised him, and spakest with thy mouth and hast fulfilled it with thine hand as it is this day. Now therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David my father that which thou hast promised him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit upon the throne of Israel, yet so that thy children take heed to their way to walk in my law as thou hast walked before me. Now then, O Lord God of Israel, let thy word be verified, which thou hast spoken unto thy servant David. But will God in very deed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house which I have built. Have respect, therefore, to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication. O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee, that thine eyes may be open unto this house day and night upon the place whereof thou hast said that thou wouldest put thy name there, to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth toward this place. Hearken therefore unto the supplications of thy servant and of thy people Israel, which they shall make toward this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven, and when thou hearest, forgive. If a man sin against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to make him swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou from heaven and do, and judge thy servants by requiting the wicked, by recompensing his way upon his own head, and by justifying the righteous, by giving him according to his righteousness. And if thy people Israel be put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall return and confess thy name and pray, and make supplication before thee in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest to them and to their fathers. When the heaven is shut up and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee. Yet if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin, when thou dost afflict them, then hear thou from heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel, when thou hast taught them the good way wherein they should walk and send rain upon thy land, which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. If there be dearth in the land, if there be pestilence, if there be blasting or mildew, locusts or caterpillars. If their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore or whatsoever sickness there be, then what prayer or what supplication soever shall be made of any man or of all thy people Israel, when every one shall know his own sore and his own grief and shall spread forth his hands in this house, then hear thou from heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and render unto every man according unto all his ways whose heart thou knowest, for thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men, that they may fear thee to walk in thy ways so long as they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning the stranger 
which is not of thy people Israel, but is come from a far country for thy great name's sake, and thy mighty hand, and thy stretched out arm. If they come and pray in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, and fear thee, as doth thy people Israel, and may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. If thy people go out to war against their enemies by the way that thou shalt send them, and they pray unto thee toward this city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou from the heavens their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for there is no man which sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them over before their enemies, and they carry them away captives unto a land far off or near. Yet if they bethink themselves in the land whither they are carried captive, and turn and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done amiss, and have dealt wickedly. If they return to thee with all their heart, and with all their soul, in the land of their captivity, whether they have carried them captives, and pray toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, and toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. Now, my God, let I beseech thee, thine eyes be open, and let thine ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now therefore arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. Chapter 7 Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priests could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of twenty and two thousand oxen and an hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. And the priests waited on their offices. The Levites also with instruments of music of the Lord, which David the king had made to praise the Lord, because his mercy endureth forever, when David praised by their ministry. And the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. Moreover, Solomon hallowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat. Also at the same time Solomon kept the feast seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great congregation, from the entering in of Hamath onto the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in heart for the goodness that the Lord had showed unto David and to Solomon and to Israel his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house. And all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house, he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, 
If thou wilt walk before me as David my father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shalt observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom, according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be a ruler in Israel. But if ye turn away, and forsake my statutes and my commandments which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods, and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them. And this house, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight, and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house, which is high, shall be an astonishment to every one that passeth by it, so that he shall say, why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered, Because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. Psalm 136 O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endureth forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endureth forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which smote great kings, for his mercy endureth forever. And slew famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endureth forever. And gave their land for an heritage, for his mercy endureth forever. Even an heritage unto Israel his servant, for his mercy endureth forever who remembered us in our lowest state, for his mercy endureth forever, and hath redeemed us from our enemies, for his mercy endureth forever, who giveth food to all flesh, for his mercy endureth forever. O give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. <laughs>